Flavor 497. You know, Lord Fowl's Bane is the first book by um, Stephen Donaldson. First novel by Stephen Donaldson in uh, The Chronicles of Thomas Coven of the Unbeliever. Not sure if it's his first novel. I assume he's written stuff before that. I wouldn't really know for sure. Um, might be his first novel. I don't really know. But um, it's his first novel in the Chronicles of Thomas Covenant the Unbeliever, uh, which is the first Chronicles of Thomas Covenant the, Un uh, Covenant the Unbeliever. Then we have the second Chronicles of Thomas Covenant, and then the last Chronicles of Thomas Covenant. There's three books in the first, three in the second, and four in the third. Ten all up. I've got, I own nine of the ten. Um, still got one more to go in the last Chronicles um, to, to acquire again. I've owned it previously, but uh, I've found the bookshelf. And Lord Fowl's Bane, I read that first back in, um, Blather 497, yeah. I read that first back in, uh, when, not long after it first came out, in the 80s. About 87-ish, 88-ish, somewhere around there, I started reading it. And I go through the first trilogy and through the first book of the second trilogy, halfway through the, the second book of the second trilogy, the one tree, and then sort of gave it away after that. The, uh, in the second trilogy, Linda Avery comes in as the main protagonist, really, in those called the Chronicles of Thomas Covenant, second Chronicles of Thomas Covenant. And um, I just wanted more about Thomas Covenant. It wasn't as much about it. And it really didn't impress me that much, so I, sort of, I just gave up on it. I, I re started reading The One Tree again a few years back, started again. Actually, it was very interesting then. But um, I didn't quite get all the... Uh, I probably didn't quite grasp it all to start with, the symbols and things like that, and the meaning behind it all. Not to start with these days, I probably have a much better understanding of the Chronicles of Thomas Covenant. But um, Lord Fowl's Bane is the first one. And uh, Lord Fowl's bane, his, his adversary, the bane of his life, the pain of an neck, I assume was Thomas Covenant. You'd have to assume it was Thomas Covenant. He was, Lord Fowl was the dark sort of devil sort of figure of the land where Thomas Covenant had been tra taken to. And um, he was the bane of Lord Fowl. But Bane, Bane is also a supervillain in the DC Universe. Um, who takes on Batman, and, uh, regularly fights Batman, and in The Dark Knight Rises, the third movie of the Christopher Nolan-directed trilogy of Batman movies, Bane appears. Um, he actually appears further back in a Batman movie, Batman and Robin, where it's, uh, I'm pretty sure he's in that one as well, uh, the George Clooney one, and um, he's... A bit of a lame Bane, by the looks of it. That's the only Batman movie I actually haven't seen, um, apart from his appearance in Justice League. I've seen Batman uh, versus Superman, and uh, but I haven't seen the, um, the Justice League yet. Still haven't gotten around to watch from Justice League. I've got it on DVD, but I just haven't watched it yet. But um, all the other Batman movies, in, well, not Batman 66. I've seen a bit of that on TV years ago when I was young. Once in the 60s, but uh, the Michael Keaton Batman movies, uh, Batman, Batman Returns, and Batman Forever, I've seen the Christopher Nolan trilogy, I've seen, and um, yeah, um, the uh, Batman vs. Superman, I've seen also. So I've seen most of the Batman movies except the Batman and Robin, which I haven't quite gotten around to watching yet. Um, I've got it on DVD, but I haven't quite gotten around to watching it. But Bane appears in a couple of Batman movies, it would seem, and um, he's a major adversary. Now, he was introduced in comics back in the 1990s. Everyone, A lot of people might have heard about the death of Superman, and he died in Superman 75, the comic issue, back in about 92 or something, or whatever, whatever year it was. But back in the 90s, Batman got killed. Uh, uh, Superman got killed. But around the same time, they were doing... Batman having an anniversary with the Nightfall sort of stuff, Nightfall and Night Quest and Night Sand, and his adversary at the time was Bane, and uh, Bane took on Batman. And um, there's also a few things going on in Wonder Woman, 
have a time in Green Lantern, there's also major falls of their characters as well, sort of st stuff they were struggling with as well. I think Wonder Woman was taking on Artemis, who replaced her for a while, a, a red-headed sort of Amazonian and with really, really long hair, and looked splendid in the comics. And uh, how Jordan sort of um, lost his Green Lantern status, I think, and Carl Rayner replaced him in the Emerald Twilight sort of sort of stuff. And uh, so there was a thing, things going on with with the majors at that time. Flash, I think, pretty much marched on about the same. But um, yeah, but Bane sort of took on Batman and um, broke his back. And Batman recovered gradually. Um, there was a Batman replacement for a while. Jean-Paul Valley, who was the the superhero Azrael, and um, trained by... I'm not sure who trained him. Um, an Order of Knights, St. Damas or something, and um, the Order of St. Damas trained him, and he had visions of St. Damas or something like that. And um, I read a little bit of the Azrael comic, which started afterwards when Bruce Wayne got his job back. But Azrael through the Night Quest was Batman. He was in a Batman uniform, a new uniform. And that was because Bane had broken Batman's back in Nightfall and uh, Bruce Wayne's back as Batman in Nightfall. And in Night Quest, Jean-Paul Valley as Azrael took over as Batman. So we had a new Batman. And uh, But in Night's End, Bruce Wayne got his job back. So his back got better and uh, did training and uh, got his job back. But Bane broke Batman's back. And then what I'm driving at, this is a long-winded way of going about it, but uh, Batman number 497, this is Blaver 497, in Batman number 497, the comic series, which started, I think, in 1940 or 1941, Batman as a title. can't remember which year exactly. But um, it was monthly. It came out every month, and comics usually come out monthly. And uh, in Batman number 497... Bane breaks Batman's back. And you see it on the cover, and it has a special edition. There was a couple of cover variants. These days, you do a hell of a lot of cover variants. Back then, you would get special covers a bit, foil covers and cover enhancements, gimmick covers, new stand edition and direct market edition. That was usually the standard plot. Superman 75, uh, the death of Superman, show, have a new stand edition and a, and a poly bag edition uh, with black... Uh, Poly bag with the red Superman logo bleeding. And there was also a diamond edition as well, which is extremely expensive. And I think it's a diamond edition or something like that, that it's called. And I thought about tracking that down one of these days. It's, it's quite scarce and costs a lot of money, but I thought about tracking that down. <clears throat> but in Batman 497, with its different covers, Bane is breaking Batman's back. And, um, you know, that's what I'm talking about. That's the whole point of this video. So, ba Batman 497. Now, Bane is, um, he's, he's stayed around in the DC universe. Um, he's, he's challenged Batman in the comics from time to time. He's, ba Bane's an ongoing supervillain. Ironically, though, the, the main anniversary which took out Superman, Doomsday, he's, um, he got killed and they brought him back and killed him again. And, uh, I think technically they bring him back on rare occasions. He's not something which appears terribly much as Doomsday. And um, from, from my observations, I wouldn't really know for sure. He might have appeared quite a bit without me having noticed. But I look at the, the, the catalog on DC regularly online to see what, what stories are. And I sort of stay up to date a bit. But uh, Doomsday doesn't feature that heavily as a recurring character. But Bane is a new addition, somewhat, not quite new now. He's been around 25 years, 30 years, whatever. But he's a newer addition to the Batman villains. And, um, yeah, Batman 497. It was very expensive to start with. After a few weeks, or straight away practically, it was a hot comic once it had sold out, because it sold out pretty quickly. And they had reprints, I think. And it was very in demand. It got very expensive, but... These days, it's cooled right down the pressure of the prices on that particular issue, and it's you can. I, I got one not too long ago for not much at all, um, so it's not that expensive necessarily now. 
Usually, you might have to pay for it if you're looking for it specifically, but you can spot it at times at a reasonable price. But Batman 497, it's a collectible sort of comic, and uh, for for its time, it was an okay story, I suppose. I, I'm not sure if I've ever read it, read it really very much. I was just collecting those those stories at the time. I was, I was mostly at that time just reading things like Lobo, I suppose, and um, uh, the Luce, now Lucifer hadn't come out yet, but um, the Demon comic I was reading at that time, and a few other things I was reading. I was collecting most of them, but wasn't quite reading my whole collection at that time. But whatever else, Batman 497, it's an interesting comic and um, pivotal issue for for Batman and his back being broken. And uh, although he's had a few dramatic major events since that time, they do a big Batman thing pretty regularly. I mean, Batman rest in peace and all sorts of things that they've done. But uh, yeah, Batman 497. Bang.